Mr. Robin Swan has been given leave to make a statement on the death of a Northern Ireland fan in Nice, which fulfills the criteria set out in Standing Order 24. If other members wish to be called, they should do so by rising in their place and continuing to do so. All members will have up to three minutes to speak on the subject. I would remind members that I will not take any point of order until this item has been finalised. Mr. Robin Swan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And it's with sadness I rise to, to move this, this this morning because Mr. Speaker, death leaves a heartache that no one can heal. And I think we were all in shock and in sadness this morning when we heard of the death of a Northern Ireland fan in this young Darren Rogers, 24 year old. Mr. Speaker, a young man, he went, like many others, to France to support his team and his country at the football, and a young man whose life was in front of him but now has been tragically cut short. Mr. Speaker, with a town of Ballymena in numbness at this minute in time due to the news that is slowly filtering out, with the Northern Ireland fans in France at a loss to understand the loss of one of their own. And I think this puts the things into perspective. And I ask the fans who are out there and who are intending to go out there to look after one another and to look after themselves and to stay safe throughout this time. And Mr. Speaker, the thoughts of this House, as I'm sure, like in the other motion, are with Darren's family and friends at this minute in time as they come to terms with the loss of a friend and a loved one. Mr. Speaker, he's, Darren is the second fatality to hit my own constituency this morning. There's been already a death as well in a road traffic accident in Ballymoney. And I think it's at this time, when we reflect on that, there'll be two homes this evening in North Antrim that will have an empty chair said not them, and it's right and proper that we reflect and think of those families at this time. I call Mr. Mervyn's story. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In life, we're in the midst of death. And how sad it is for us as members in this house to yet again have to come and to be reminded that there is but a step between us and death. None of us know, Mr. Speaker, when we rise in the morning, who it is that will prepare our body for the shroud. And when Darren went to, to France, none of us ever knew or thought that the celebrations that we would have as a nation would be tempered with such sadness to his family to his friends and to his community, we extend our sincere sympathy. As with the families in Orlando, and as with the families right across this globe, who because of a variety of issues and problems face death, it is good for us all to take a moment in this chamber and to remember that we are all mortal. And that there will come a day when each one of us will pass from this scene of time out into eternity. And where is our comfort in the midst of sorrow? The psalmist David, I think, penned it well when he said, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And it is sad that there are those who believe that death is sometimes justifiable. Whether it is in the sick mind of someone who is filled with the hatred of his cause under the banner of a religion such as what we saw in Orlando, or whether it is for some political cause that they believe can justify the taking of innocent life. This little country of ours has seen too many funerals. Too many sad days. And I trust that as we move forward as a society, that the one thing that collectively in this house we can do is that we can stand together to say that there should never ever again be any justification for them. To Darren's family and to the wider football community, I say to them today and this, and also to Superintendent Goddard from the PSNI who is there at this moment in time. Our thoughts and our prayers are with you all.
call Mr. Raymond McCartney. I'm going to call Sean Chantrain, but while I'm covering the horse to Clan Darren Rogers for a pass of air, can I, on behalf of Sean Fain, offer our sincere sympathies to the family of Darren Rogers, who died last night in a tragic accident in Nice, in, in France? In, in what obviously was a, a time of great joy, uh, a festival of football, and I have no, absolutely no doubt, and I know Paul Frew knew the man very personally, and he played for, for Braid United, so he's obviously a very passionate soccer player and indeed uh, a soccer fan. So, in a, a time of great joy, to have this type of tragedy visited upon himself and all his wider family, our thoughts and prayers are very much with them. And I hope that and for some consolation, that whatever efforts can be made to ensure the safe and speedy return of the body, because sometimes in these tragedies it takes a long time for people to come home and be repatriated. I hope that his family can get a speedy return and they'll have some solace in what is obviously very tragic times for them and the community in North Antrim. So thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Call Ms. Claire Hanna. Mr. Speaker, and I would like to associate our party with, with the comments of others and add our sincere condolences um, to this young man's family and, uh, as others have said, the wider footballing family. It was obviously uh, a trip of a lifetime. He's probably saved up for it and, and the memories would have sustained him and his mates for, for years to come. And that It is devastating uh, that an accident of this uh, nature has happened. Uh, they'll take a long time to get over it, particularly at that formative uh, age of, the, of, of uh, their lives. And I hope that they do. Uh, uh, look after each other in the coming weeks during uh, the rest of the trip and, and in the years to um, come. I'm no footballing expert, but I think I, like a lot of people, have been so encouraged by um, the positivity of fans uh, of, of both of the teams uh, on this island, and in particular how they've related to each other and, and other teams as well. And they know, um, other than people who obsess about the politics of football, it is about um, people getting together and the best of their endeavour going out, putting on a show, and, and, and for the benefit and the enjoyment of the people uh, who watch it. I know I had my first trip to uh, Windsor Park a couple of weeks ago to watch um, Northern Ireland as they uh, headed off in their last match before, and was, was very taken by the positivity and the warmth and the change of that uh, fan base, um, and uh, of which Darren would have been one, and he was probably there, and just to uh, send our deepest condolences to him and to all his friends as they, and family as they come to terms with this. Call Mr. David Ford. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can I also, on behalf of the Alliance Party, uh, extend our condolences to the family of Darren Rogers? It was certainly a matter of great shock and sadness for those who thought that this weekend was going to be something in which we could celebrate the result of a rugby match in South Africa, celebrate at least. Uh, a creditable performance in the football field in Nice, and to then hear that there are things much more important than sporting achievement, which will have deeply affected not just a family, but a circle of friends as well. As has been said, clearly Darren was not just a football fan, but he was a football participant who enriched the lives of Braid United. He was clearly well respected by the remarks which are already uh, visible on social media referring to him as a true gentleman and somebody who contributed a great deal and certainly understand that the Green and White Army will be paying a particular tribute to him at the Ukraine match, which is appropriate, but it's also appropriate that in this place we should remember his friends and family as well at this time. I suppose it's particularly disappointing after all the positivity which surrounded the match, the fact that it's not always the case that at football matches supporters from the two teams can go to a match together, can come away from it together, can celebrate together in a constructive, positive relationship, and that perhaps makes it even more poignant that there was a tragic end to that night for one particular individual. But we can assure uh, the family, the friends, the playing colleagues of Darren Rogers that he will be in the thoughts and the prayers of all of us at this time. I call Mr. Jim Mollister. Mr. Speaker, um, thank Mr. Swan for bringing this matter to the House and join in expressing Condolences to the family of this young constituent, a reminder of how quickly joy can turn to sorrow. And um, none of us anticipated that we'd be standing here this morning uh, speaking in these terms about the very joyous visit of so many to France. The football fraternity is a very close fraternity, and um, their enthusiasm knows no bounds 
and have no doubt they all set off to France uh, uh, with unbounded enthusiasm and joy and today many are devastated. One of my colleagues, Alderman MacDonald of Mid and East Antrim Council, who is very much involved in the Fitful fraternity, was with Darren yesterday, uh, talking to him. Little did he or anyone think that today we would be mourning his passing. And I join with those who have made a, an appeal to the authorities to make sure that there is speedy return of the body. We don't want this tragedy compounded by delays in that regard. And the family in Balamina who are so grieving today, uh, they need to know that all possible has been done to help. And the football fraternity, over whom this dark cloud now rests in the rest uh, of this campaign, our thoughts need to be with them too, because it will be a difficult time while they seek to continue to enjoy themselves, to realize that one who was with them is no longer with them. Uh, and uh, these, therefore, no matter, no matter what way you look at this, this is a profound tragedy uh, in which we commit to our thoughts and prayers all affected by it. I thank you.